Hello everybody, this is Jack Dennis and welcome to our fly fishing and tying channel. I hope you're all having a good start to the new year and out tying a lot of flies. Uh, we started uh, a couple weeks ago with our Jack Dennis and Friends fly tying session. Uh, our first one was with uh, Dave Allison and I'm going to be showing you some from the past. One of the things I've been involved with uh, my fly tying career is setting up fly tying theaters and been involved with the many conclaves that fly fishing groups and clubs have over the country. And they uh, really highlight tires that you may not have ever met. And one of the best ones is one in Idaho, both the Western Idaho Expo and the uh, Eastern Idaho Expo, which is in Idaho Falls. Uh, they've been doing these fly tying get togethers for a long time. We're talking over 30 years. So I want to do some highlights from some that I filmed in 2009 and 2010. And you will get a chance to meet some names you know, and some, maybe some names you didn't know. And one of the nice things about tying at these expos is all the uh, excitement and sounds of people going around telling lots and lots of fly fishing stories. Most of them may be exaggerated. But one of the nice things about the theater is you get a chance to listen to the tires talk about it, their experiences uh, and, and answer questions. I, I think you're going to enjoy them. Uh, we're going to start this uh, week with uh, uh, several. Uh, we'll try to give you the most information. And I know some of you are going to say, wow, you know, I don't know about the materials. Well, these are really uncut. So, you know, you do your best on figuring it out. But I think you're going to enjoy the interaction uh, with the crowd and with the tires. And really, uncut un and, I think, extremely fun. Let's get going. Our first tire from the Eastern Idaho uh, Fly Tying Expo is Todd Landing. And you're going to enjoy Todd. Uh, this was done a number of years ago when he was uh, at the South Fork Lodge uh, working with Mike Lawson and eventually ended up at Henry's Fork Anglers again working with Mike Lawson. A very talented tire and guide and kind of the, the, one of the authorities that you can find around the, uh, the Henry's Fork Lodge as Mike has gone into retirement this year, you will see, of course, Todd there. And he is a very accomplished fisherman and authority. So we're going to take it away a number of years. This is from 2009. And of course, it's 2023 here. And we'll move up and hope we'll hear a lot more from Todd. You might find a lot of his work if you go to the Henry's Fork uh, Anglers website and they have a whole bunch of videos uh, on their area and a lot of Todd talking about the Henry's Fork fishing. So enjoy Todd Lang. <laughs> I do. I, well, I grew up in uh, Melba, Idaho. I grew up with a, uh, really with a fly rod in my hand. I, my, my grandpa probably is responsible for getting me involved in fly fishing, and I've, it's, uh, I've been fishing as, for as long as I can remember. Some of my first memories are actually with my grandpa catching, catching rainbow trout. And I've, it's just a passion in my life. I, I love what I do. Wouldn't change it for the, for the world. I know you uh, are manager of the fly shop and you like to guide, but you like being there to talk to people. I do. I, I really enjoy interacting with people. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, tell us about the patterns you're going to tie. Well, I'm going to tie some uh, patterns that are a little, kind of going back more toward the traditional type patterns. Uh, and what I've kind of come to my conclusion is, is that, that we overdress our flies. So I. Uh, the patterns that I'm tying are going to be, the, the word of the day is going to be sparse. Uh, tying flies that are a lot more sparse than what you buy in, in, a, in a fly shop today. 
What are the patterns? Give us some names here. Well, they're, uh, most of them are just knockoffs. I'm doing a, a yellow Sally pattern that's kind of, and it's going to look a lot like a stimulator. And then, and I don't have names for them, honestly, but, you know, just some pheasant tails with some legs and just some different twists on, on flies that you, you see every day probably in your fly box. Just a, just a little different look to them. And then I, um, I'm also tying them with, a, with polar dub. Um, dubbing so it has more of that shine to it and trying to imitate um, like a, a nymph that's coming up through the water column after it's you know sh uh, puffed itself up with the gas and it has kind of has that shine to it I like that shine on those in the uh, nymph patterns and the emergers what do you like about the south well oh, it's, it's just a beautiful river it's it's real diverse there's a lot of different um, situations on the south fork it's a real beginner friendly it's a real user friendly river those cutthroat uh, tend to come up they like to eat dry flies and, and that's what I love and and I really love the cutthroat I think it's one of the most beautiful fish that, that God's ever made so testing 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 okay here we go Thanks everybody for coming. My name's Todd. I've, I uh, run South Fork Outfitters up there in Swan Valley, Idaho. And uh, we're just going to do a couple of my favorite patterns uh, for the South Fork. We're going to kind of con concentrate more on the mayfly aspect of things. Uh, I'm not going to really do anything with foam today. It's, uh, I kind of like fishing the ripple water, kind of like concentrating on, on uh, fish that are eaten in, in ripples. And I think uh, most of the flies that you get in a fly shop, or in even what we do ourselves, I think that we tend to overdress uh, the, the flies that we tie. So we're, gonna, we're going to, uh, if you take anything from today, take, take that away. Take the, we need to, to fool some of those bigger fish, especially up in, the, in, the, in that rip of water, um, go way sparse on those flies. The flies, and I'm not saying that the flies that you get in a fly shop don't work because they do, those overdressed flies generally work fine, they float great and everything, but to fool those bigger, pickier fish that are up uh, targeting specific mayflies, I think the more sparse that you can tie them to make them look uh, more lifelike, I think the better off that you are. I've actually got some specimens here for you guys to look at. If somebody wants to come up and grab them, we can, you can pass them around, but what you'll see with these naturals is that they're real, they're real, uh, they're real slender. I mean, they're design the nymphs are designed to live in, in the current, so they're all real streamlined, and, they're, and uh, most of the pheasant tails and everything that you get in, in my shop or anywhere else, I think, are too bulky. I think that they're, they're overdressed. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a, uh, a little pink PMD, basically. Or you can also, we also have the uh, pink Alberts on the South Fork. They're both about the same size, real close. To the bug is... It, the only way you can really differentiate, you know what I'm trying to say, is one of them has two tails and one of them has three. The PMDs have three tails, the pink Alberts have two tails. And sometimes that pink Albert wing is a little bit darker than what you'll see on a PMD, but that's really about it. And if, like I tell everybody, if the fish uh, are start to count tails, we better take up golfing or bowling because we're all out of business. Um, and what I like to do, I really like to use this 200R hook because I like the, the bend that has kind of a, a bend to it that looks kind of like uh, natural bug wood. And when I'm tying, um, the th I try to use the smallest thread that I can. In this case, 6 aught or 8 aught. 8 aught you tend to break a little bit more. And so if you're going to get one thread that you could use for just about everything that we're tying today, you're probably pretty good with 6 aught. And this particular pattern now is going to be kind of a like a floating nymph, um, and I'm going to use the the uh, the six aught thread, and I'm going to use pink because that's what we're doing. We're going to do that. We're going to mimic that pink PMD or that pink Albert that you see on the South Fork. Um, as far as sizes go, early in the season when they first start hatching, and generally you're going to see these PMDs about right around Fourth of July. It's a water temperature thing. When the water temperature comes up to about 50, 55 degrees, that's kind of what unlocks everything on the South Fork. So you're going to see salmon flies going then, yellow sallies, PMDs, all the different insect life is going to kind of all happen at the same time. So just a little tip, if you're on the South Fork and you're specifically going there to throw salmon flies and you're not having any luck, don't be afraid to go out on, look on a ripple and see what's going on on the river because there's, there's going to be a lot of different things all going on, uh, off at once. 
And to be honest with you, the, the salmon fly hatch on the South Fork the last three years, I'm going to say, hasn't been very good. I'm not 100% sure why. I think it's because we've had so many years of drought and there was a lot of silt and, and water temperatures got up pretty high that year that the reservoir went down to 10% of capacity and, and those bugs just can't handle that silty, dirty water and uh, the high temps. Now the golden stones on the other hand, they, they must be a little more hardy because the golden stones last year were better than I've ever seen uh, ever. Okay, so to start out this little, uh, this little bug we're going to do, I like to use a uh, wood duck. I like to use the, the natural stuff. You can buy imitation wood duck flank, but I don't think it has the same color and doesn't have the same effect as the, as the uh, natural stuff. Is, is that still centered? And we're just going to get two or three strands here. Now what we want to try to avoid is wrapping a whole bunch of thread, you know, going back and forth, wrapping too many layers of thread on because that's where that bulk starts to come from. So I'll just start right at the back, right, right. I like to wrap back so I'm behind the barb of the hook. Try to keep your thread on the top. And then you can, if you want to, when you're first tying these tails in, tie them long. It's easier for you, for you to manage your material if you tie it in long. And then if you just do some loose wraps around it, then you can adjust your, um, the length of your material accordingly. So um, you, using it, I actually tied this in just about perfect. That's about as long as you want. You don't want it longer than the, than the shank of your hook. The, those tails. And just tie two or three or four strands in and then uh, your thread should be hanging just about just about uh, to the uh, barb of the uh, of the hook. You see that there? Just right in front of or right behind it. And then we're going to take our uh, wire, if I can find it here. Just going to do a little wire rib basically. And I really like using this uh, amber colored wire. I think it has a, a nice sheen to it. And it. The more sparkly type stuff you can put on these bugs as you're tying for the South Fork, the better off you are, especially with the mayfly, because as, they're, as they emerge, as they come up through the water, so through the water column, they're puffing their, their uh, nymphal shucks up with, a, with gas, and, and it really has a sheen to it. It really sparkles. If you, if you have an opportunity, and people are going to think you're weird, trust me, because I've gotten some weird looks, but put on, a, put on a dive mask and a snorkel and lay in a riffle and watch what happens. And you'll see these bugs as they're emerging, swimming up through the water column, you'll see this, there's a sheen to them. And then that's what those fish key in on. And, and honestly, that's why bead heads work the way they do, I think, because they, um, th that has that little shine to it, especially on the bright days. And don't worry, if I see you laying in a riffle, I'm not going to look at you weird at all because I'm going to know exactly what you're doing. So tie that, uh, that wire in. And now what we're going to do, once we got that wire turned in, uh, tied in, we're going to basically build up a little bit of a body with, with just using the thread of, of the, uh, off your bobbin. So build it up, taper it, kind of ice cream cone, the narrow part you want to the back and you want to build it up as you move forward. Now you can do this pattern with just about any fly that you want. So for instance, if I was doing a blue wing olive or if I was wanting to mimic a, a, uh, a pink or a yellow PMD, I'll, I would just change color. So instead of, for a blue wing olive, for instance, I'd be using brown thread or green thread. And if it was a PMD like you see on the Henry's fork, then I would change this thread color to yellow. It's the six aught thread, yep. And just remember, try to keep it as sparse as possible. Try to, try to uh, mimic the natural bug as much as you can. So can you see that on there? Can you see how I'm kind of building that body up with a little bit of a taper to it? Okay, now we're going to put in a little piece of a wing here. This is going to help... Uh, got the wrong stuff. Bear with me. Sorry, folks. Here we go. For the wing, I really like to use it. It's called floating yarn. It's polypropylene. It's a uh, great material. It's going to help keep that uh, fly floating just right in the surface film. That's, 
that's kind of what you want to do is fish this particular pattern just either right underneath the surface or right in the surface film. And they're really hard to see. They're next to impossible to see. So the way to, to help you with that is just tie on a big Adams or some kind of an indicator fly that you can see. Tie this fly on about a foot behind it. And that'll kind of help you with, uh, with seeing the takes. Now the, the polypropylene is pretty, it's a pretty bulky material, so I'll take it, cut a piece off, and then I'll cut it in about, and I'll cut it myself in about thirds, because we don't want that great big bulky wing on here. We want just a little bit of wing material. Once again, go, you can, because it's a synthetic material, it's real easy to, to cut it. It's not like natural feathers, you know, you put natural feather wing on and then you go to cutting on it, and it just doesn't look right. But with this synthetic stuff, it, uh, it's real easy to work with. So I'm going to tie that in, keeping it right on the top of the hook shank. Two or three wraps. Make sure that you got it secured. And go ahead and work, work your thread up toward the eye of the hook just to keep that. It just is going to add to the durability of your fly. And then just forget about it. Just let it lay back. You know what? I, I skipped a step. Before you put that wing on, wrap your, uh, rib your bug. Wrap wrap your uh, copper. Try to keep them fairly evenly spaced and, you, and don't worry about having them real close together. And just work that thread forward, or I mean this copper forward. It's actually real small. It's, it's real small wire. You know, um, where I got this, this stuff from is that that Norvice wire that they use to, that you can make those big dubbing brushes out of, you know what I'm talking about, go see that. Or you can go to Jimmy's and just find this real fine small wire and get amber or copper is the color you want. The smaller the better, especially for these smaller flies. This is, this is a uh, number 20 hook I'm using here. What I like about it though is, is this 200R, I think it is. Yeah, 200R, but it's 3X long, so it's not like you're tying on a little size 20 just because of the length of the, the shank of the hook. Okay, then we're going to use what I, what I use for the, for the thorax of this bug is, I, is this polar, polar dub, they call it. And then there's ice dub. There's a whole bunch of this different uh, material that has that shine to it. That It's real sparkle. Um, a real sparkly material, and it's what I like to use for, um, I don't know if the camera will catch it or not, but it's real, it really had, you can see it right there, see how it, how it reflects light? I really like this material for these, uh, these little dry flies. And I use it on a lot of different patterns too. And then once again, we're just going to go real sparse. Um, and when you're tying flies at home, Starting out sparse is the way to go. It's always easier to add material to your uh, thread. It's a lot easier to add it than it is to try to take it off. So we're just going to build up, basically build up a little thorax here. And when you're going to, and you can leave it buggy like that. You see how those little, looks like little legs almost sticking off there in the, in the, if you look in the camera? That's, that's good. You want that effect on with, the, with this fly. Now we're going to throw some legs on here too now. Now the way, the, the, what I really like to use for these legs is, is uh, these partridge feathers. And I take the, I get the, the feathers for the legs here right off the, right off the back of the, uh, of the bird, right, right in the middle of his back. Then there's a pretty easy way to do this. You can, I'll try to do it in the camera here, but basically what you want to do is just hold that up, get all this uh, extra stuff out of your way, so you're just basically looking at that, and then just come in here and cut a V right out of the middle of it, so you end up with that V right there. I don't know if the, there you go. You just ended up with that V right there. And then, now the feather has a natural curve to it. And what I do is just to work, make it easier to work with is I just try to skin all this um, extra stuff off without breaking it like I just now did. Now the fish, 
unfortunately they can't count yet, but I try to keep it my legs once again down pretty sparse. So I end up with with uh, three or four uh, fibers on each side of the feather here, and I'm going to show that to you so you can all see what I'm talking about. But that's what you end up with right there is that little V. And then we're just basically going to put this right on top of the hook with the curved side going down. And we're just going to lay it right in there like that. And I'm going to come back here and pinch those legs. And we're just going to wrap right over the top of it. Try, try to keep those, try to keep your uh, legs or that stem right on the top of the fly. Right on the top of the hook shank, I should say. And it makes some great little legs. And the, and the partridge, is just, it's just real natural looking. And so it's real buggy looking. I don't know if you can see those legs right there. But they, they look great. They look just like the, the real McCoy. And if you get eight legs on one side and three legs on the other, don't worry about it. It's not going to, it's not going to matter at all. And then we're just going to take a little bit more of this pink dubbing and, and we're going to uh, make a little bit more of a head, build up his head just a little tiny bit. And once again, we want to go minimum. Just going to finish that head right up. And you can see right there, that's about as much as you want. I've got a little too much on here. So we'll take a little bit of that off. And this stuff's pretty easy to work with. If you, get, if you Like I just put too much on there, so I took a little bit off. And you're just going to have to bring in, come in here with your scissors and just trim a little bit of that off. Whip finish it, and you're in business. Now this is a... A fly that you're going to want to use when you're in that situation to where you've, you've found a bunch of fish up eating. Uh, they're eating dry flies, but they're not coming up and eating the duns, and you're getting refusal after refusal. Tie this on behind the, the dun fly. A lot of times those fish will come up and just stare at the dun. You've probably all been in that situation, and then they'll start following it back just to go back down again. Putting on these little emerger-type patterns and fishing them in the, in the surface film is going to really help you with that. We're going to cut this wing way down. The wing is going to help it float a little bit. And if you're really watching, um, if you're just fishing this fly as a single, it's going to help you to pick it out. It, it's, a, it's a great pattern, though, for the south fork. And, and especially in that situation where you're, um, where you're seeing a bunch of fish that are coming up and constantly refusing that, the, uh, the duns that you're, that you're fishing. I'm going to take this off and pass it around. And you guys have a look at it. And if you got any questions.